Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline for Adobe Premiere Pro. Today, we're going to use one of the companion products that's included with Adobe Premiere Pro, and that is the Adobe Media Encoder. It's a truly useful tool that most people don't really get the most out of. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to go from your finished sequence right to the web or Blu-ray or other outputs. So, here goes. We've got a sequence here, in this case a music video that I cut, and this just comes from the book from Still to Motion. And we had a chance to work with a great musician named Luke Brindley. And what I'm going to do here is I want to publish this out to the web. Well, it couldn't be easier. If you're coming to Premiere Pro from another NLE, you're probably used to exporting a self-contained file that you then hand off to some compression program and it works in the background. Well, the cool thing with Adobe Media Encoder is you don't have to render, you don't have to export, you just do a quick handoff and then you can jump right back in and keep editing. Here's how it works. I'm going to go ahead and just choose File, Export, Media. And that shortcut is just Control M, which fortunately is logical for, hey, I want to control media, or I want to command media on a Mac. Let's just go ahead and choose that, and it sends it on over. Our window here lets us choose what we want. Now, if you need to, like maybe you want to send only one section of a project, you could actually mark in and out times, and that lets you define a custom range. So maybe you're in the middle of working and you want to hand off like this first part of the video, like that part's ready for client review, but you're working on the second half, no big deal. You can just mark that range out. You can also choose the entire sequence or type in a work area. We can come on in here and we could choose to export. This cool one here is match sequence settings. The good thing with that is this is a nice way to back up your project. So if you're a little nervous, you got the hard drive getting flaky, or you just want to make a self-contained file when the project is done, checking match sequence settings is going to output a self-contained file that's just as high quality as what you have in the timeline. That's great. Purpose of today's lesson, though, is to show you how to get a file that's ready for upload, such as to a site like creativecow.net. So I can go ahead here and choose from a bunch of formats. Now, Adobe Media Encoder is really robust. It does graphics, audio, camera formats, and all sorts of web-ready formats. Quick overview of which ones matter most. If you're targeting the web, chances are you're going to stick with one of the following. These days, first and foremost, H.264. Another name for this is MPEG-4. Clear winner going on here is a popular format, especially for video sharing sites. If you want to go to a website or you're looking for some interactivity, then you're probably going to go with the FLV or F4V option, which is going to create an Adobe Flash video file. Really good, also very common and robust file format. If you're on the Windows version of Premiere Pro, you'll also find Windows Media, and you'll see other things pop up here if you've got any third-party tools installed. Let's go ahead here with H.264, and we get the option here to choose some presets. One of the things I really like is that we have presets for websites like Vimeo and YouTube. Now, there's not a Creative Cow preset, but I'll let you in on a secret. If you want to load your video up to Creative Cow and post it for people to review, stick with the Vimeo or YouTube presets. Creative Cow is just as supportive of those as well. It's a nice balance of file size to image quality. In fact, I favor the Vimeo ones because it's just a little higher data rate and it looks really good on the web. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that Vimeo HD preset. Looks good. I could give it a specific output name, click that, and actually target where I want the file to go. Come on in here, look at my settings. If I need to, I could put a little blur to soften things up. Sometimes it's useful to sort of drag through and check your frame. That looks pretty good. I can come on over here and take a look, and I'm going to take advantage of the video settings here. And this lets me check the size. Right now it's a full HD, 1280 by 720. If I wanted to bump that down, I could just click and type in a new size. You could also choose a frame rate. Now this particular one's 2997, but if I needed to, I can go to 24p or anything else. Pretty straightforward stuff. I could see over here that the original sequence was 23976, so I'm going to make sure I match that. Notice you've got 24 and 23976, really depending on the source material. What we call 24p, if it was shot on video, is probably 23976. If you did truly shoot on film, then it really is 24. Just make sure you don't choose the wrong one or you're going to get unnecessary softening to the end image. Look that over here. Be careful with the scroll wheel that you don't bump it. And I'm going to switch this over to VBR 2 pass. Now VBR is variable bitrate encoding and it is a much better option. 
What happens is the Adobe Media Coder goes through with the two-pass option and just goes through the whole file and analyzes it the first time through. Where can I compress more? Where do I need more data so this image doesn't break up? Then the second time it goes through and it properly compresses the file. So using that VBR2 pass is going to give you both the smallest file and the best looking file. The only drawback is it takes a little bit more time. But the good news is, is that Adobe Media Encoder, unlike most of the other tools on the market, is an actual 64-bit multi-thread application. In plain English, it's freaking fast and it's really good. So I encourage you to try it if you haven't used it. I never used to say that about Adobe Media Encoder, but it really came a long way with CS5. Now I'm looking at all that there, it looks good. I've got the qu proper quality settings set there. I could tweak the settings here to bump up the data rate if needed, but it looks pretty good. And if I'm all set, I'll just tweak the audio. I'm going to go with AAC, which is very common here. Stereo. I could drop that down to 44.1, which is more common on the web, or stick with the native 48. I'm going to take the audio quality down to medium in this case, so it's just a little smaller file. And I could adjust the bitrate settings. Let's go down to 192. That looks good. If you want, you could even type in an FTP for a directory. And when you're all set, you click the Q button and it adds it to the Adobe Media Encoder. Now, if it hasn't been running, the Adobe Media Encoder is going to kick in. The advantage here now is you've got some control. If you want all the processing power of your machine to be in Adobe Premiere Pro, then you just leave this in the queue and you keep working. However, if you want this to run in the background, you can do that too. I could just click Start Queue and let it run. And notice it's going full speed. I could switch back over to Premiere Pro, duplicate my sequence, or even work with the existing sequence and keep going. The cool thing about the media encoder is that you could be working on a long sequence, queue up just the first part of that sequence and export it with the Adobe media encoder, jump right back into Premiere and keep working on the same sequence and it won't screw things up. At this point, it's taken about 15 minutes for that five minute video and that's because we have the two pass encode on there. However, at this point of the game, I want it to look really good because it's done and I want to share it with the world. If you wanted to speed things up and this was just for a rough review, you could choose that one pass or even the constant bitrate option. And then you're going to be looking at encode times that are down in the five minute or the one to one ratio. The faster the machine, the beefier the card, the quicker this is going to run. So all these things tie together. But hands down, the Adobe Media Encoder is really fast. I find it faster than just about any other tool out there. And that's going right through and it's looking great. The cool thing is I can minimize that, switch right back to Premiere Pro and keep working. And that's why I love the Adobe Media Encoder. No downtime, no sitting there while the files get handed off, no rendering, just get it done and keep working. For the Adobe Premiere Pro Video Adrenaline, my name's Rich Harrington, and I invite you to head on over to the creativecow.net website where there's tons of great tutorials and forums worth checking out to help you get more done with the Adobe Creative Suite.